relatively simple, so people, you know, basically know where to look, so their eyes aren't searching all over the place. So arranging text elements in blocks is a really, really big thing. Um, now we're going to talk about the different kinds of graphics pages, just briefly. And again, this is giving you a real fast blow through of this stuff. We've had it before, and um, this is kind of a little bit of a brush up. Now, the different kind, of, different kind of text pages you're going to run into. There's a couple of them. There's a scroll. There's a crawl. Uh, and there's one called the frame store. And there's another one called a build. And there's a couple little quirky ones, okay? And we'll talk about those later. First one we're going to talk about is a scroll. So, the scroll basically, a scroll page, if people are asking for that, here's your screen. They're asking for text elements to come up and move up like credits on a movie. End credits on a movie, we all know what that looks like. So that's basically what's happening here. The text is just moving in a direction and being replaced by other text as it goes up. So that's pretty simple. Now the next one is a crawl. A crawl page is basically you have your screen and then the text elements are crawling across the bottom of the screen. You see that a lot on like 24-hour news stations. While they're talking about one thing on the screen, they'll have maybe sports or weather scrolling across the bottom. <clears throat> now, the one after that, it's kind of different people call it different things, but a frame store page is basically a still image of an object or a person. It's basically a freeze frame. And sometimes text is put over that. Okay? The act of putting text over top of a freeze frame or any other video, it's also called keying it. So if somebody says, I want you to key that text element over that live video, what they're asking you to do is put it over top of a piece of live video or frozen video or whatever. Okay, now the next one is over here is build. It's kind of like this. Here's your screen, and you'll have a text element come up here, and it'll pop up, and then while it stays up, text element 2 will come up. Then, then text 3 will come up. So one's popping up after the other. Basically, you're building a graphics page by revealing one at a time. So basically all you're doing is, you know, you're making three graphics pages and then just popping them up one after another. Okay, now here's a couple little slang terms that everybody uses in television as far as graphics go. Um, we've all seen this. Here's your reporter and they're standing there talking about something and there's some kind of a bar. Maybe it's a full color bar, maybe it's partially translucent lucent, whatever, and then it has that person's name underneath it. Okay, that's called a lower third. So when somebody asks for a lower third, that's what they're asking for. A piece of text across the bottom with some kind of a graphic separator to separate them from the background, make it easier to read behind them. Um, now, close to that is something called a bug, B-U-G like the insect. In a bug, it's like a text element usually located in the corner of the screen and it might have the TV station's logo or something like that on it. And it's up permanently. It might be up full opacity, it might be partially, you know, dissolved into the background. But that's what a bug is. It's kind of like a watermark, like a stamp telling you, you know, where this signal's coming from. <clears throat> Give me a second here. And that's pretty much, I think, for this little bit of graphics review stuff, all we really had to do. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. That went pretty fast. Now, your project. Here's what we're going to do. This is what I'm thinking about doing. And if you guys hate it, hate it, hate it, you know, let me know. 
I'm going to give you my phone number up here too. So sometimes it's just easier to make a phone call and have an actual conversation than constantly texting or emailing back and forth. Since we can't use the studio, um, basically what my plan was, I was going to have each of you simulate like you were shooting a live remote. Like you were out in the field somewhere. And I know you're not supposed to be around people, that kind of stuff. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. Okay? But the gist of it is you're going to be simulating a live remote. And I'm going to ask you to get, make four of them over the next few weeks. Pretty easy. Okay? Each one's going to be... Each one's going to be 90 seconds, okay, 90 seconds long. And a news package, in case you need refreshed on that, is basically a pre-recorded portion that we would insert into a live switch thing. And it's somebody, they shot it out in the field and they edited it down to a pre-recorded thing. Now, I don't know what you guys have to edit on or what you have to shoot on, but I'm going to make this simple enough that if you have nothing, you can do it probably on your phone. Now, there's a program from Adobe you can get for free for your phone called Rush, R-U-S-H. I guess some of you know about it. It's a very simple editing program. And if you have anything else, Windows Movie Maker would be more than adequate. Just doing a couple cuts. If that, you could probably do this live in one take if you thought about it hard enough. So anyway, 90 seconds, four live remotes. Here's the subject matter. The subject matter is going to be about the coronavirus and how it's affecting your life. So, subject one, the first report, is about safety. Okay, what do you have to do in these times to maintain a reasonable degree of safety for yourself or your family or whatever? Now, you can interview a family member or somebody else that you're pretty sure, you know, doesn't have the virus, um, or you can interview yourself, okay? Um, if, you, if you have absolutely nobody else, you just make yourself the subject of it. So you want to con address safety concerns. First, state what the problem is and maybe how widespread it is and what you can do to make it less dangerous. And then try to end with something positive and end each one of those segments with a toss back to the studio, you know, a back to you kind of thing. Okay, that's number one, safety. Number two, is food and other items. Now, this is about obtaining food and maybe other items that you might need during times of crisis like this, like you can't go to the state store now, for those of you over 21, so you have to be creative with that. Um, and, you know, a lot of stores, most stores aren't open. I mean, I think Walmart still are. But So, basically, you're going to make a little report from the field about availability, shortages, um, what might happen in the future, and, you know, maybe things that you should have on hand ready to go all the time. And maybe things that you can do without or things you can substitute. Something like that. But it's a report from the field talking about food and obtaining other items. That's number two. These are all 90 seconds, remember. Number three. Adjusting to our new life. So basically, this is a you know a personal kind of um, kind of um, news package that you're finding out how people are making adjustments to the way they socialize or maybe you know uh, work, relax, have fun, whatever. So basically, how we've made adjustments to this new way of living at this point in time. Um, this one could be a lot of fun, okay? 
So basically, I would kind of like you guys to all start them with, you know, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah for WCCC, TV One News, that kind of deal, and then go into the thing. If you actually, if you're lucky enough to have somebody to, to interview, you know, basically set it up, ask them a question, then turn it over to them, ask them the next question, um, that kind of thing. You could do that live in one take, depending on, you know, uh, how it goes. Or if you want to edit it apart, that's up to you. Because I don't know, like I said, I don't know what you guys have and what your skills are with that stuff at this point. So I'm going to give you some options and some leeway there. All right, so number three, adjusting to our new life. Yeah. Never thought I'd be doing this from home. Anyway, number four. Now remember, again, these are all 90-second news packages. This one is some speculation, but it's how will things be changed after this? After this pandemic thing is over, if we're still alive, how will things be changed? I guarantee you, some stuff's not going back to normal. Um, it's just like after 9-11, you know, I was certainly old enough to, I was full, you know, it wasn't that long ago. Um, some things never went back to normal. Like airports were way different before 9-11 than they are now, that kind of thing. So some things are probably going to change forever after this, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if this kind of schooling gets a lot bigger after this. So that's the fourth one. How will things be changed after this? Now what I'm going to do now, in case you've lost it, I'm going to give you just my regular old phone and cell phone number. If you want to text me or if you want to actually talk to me, that would work. <clears throat> I don't care. Home is 724-686-3602. And cell is 724-787-3191. So, if you need to want to get a hold of me that way, that's fine. Um, Either of those are great. So basically, that's pretty much all we had to do tonight. So uh, today, I'm, I'm recording this on Thursday. Hopefully I'll get to post it today, but if not, you'll see it soon. So Alex, Kay, Ryan, Jessica, Elizabeth, Kaylee, and Luke, I hope you guys are holding up okay. And it's going to be a big day. <laughs> see ya.